Boom, master copy complete. I take you through mixing all the paint, stroke by stroke, attacking this painting. If you enjoy this sort of content, please hit the like button. You know how it works, it helps out the channel. Without further ado, let's begin. What's up everybody, we're doing self-portrait. Just kidding. What's up, we're in the studio, I'm Slu. We're back to do a master painting, some oil painting. It's like bouncing between crazy, you know, graphic projects with stencils and fantastical characters and then traditional oil painting. And those are like the two main things. I do a whole bunch of other stuff like video editing and commission work, but those are kind of the two pillars. And I'm back on the oil painting tip and I'm so excited. On my Patreon channel, we took a vote to see which John Singer Sargent um, copy I was gonna do for a master painting. Go check out the Patreon, I do polls, it's interactive. It's a great way to get behind the scenes, exclusive, more access within what's going on here in the videos. But we they unanimously decided to do the, the self-portrait by Singer Sargent. This is a very popular painting to do a master copy. Also, people wanted to see this one, which is a beautiful young girl, beautiful strokes, beautiful light. I'll do that eventually, but we're gonna do this one. And you know, master copying, there's a whole bunch on YouTube. It's really popular. It's a great way. It's kind of like uh, uh, painting archaeology, you know, dissecting and analyzing the techniques, the strokes, the colors um, in order to improve and learn. So it's just great exposure. I've never really done one, so I'm pretty excited, actually. And we're going to use some delicious oil paint. The Zorn palette, the last seven kind of painting videos I think I've been using this palette, it's a limited palette, titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and ivory black. Limited palettes help me stay focused, harmonizing color. When there's eight to 12 tubes of paint, I get confused. Colors get muddy and I lose the values. You know, this palette is super powerful. It's a pretty famous palette. The ivory black um, and the titanium white make a cool gray. Um, and that cool gray compared to like reds looks like a blue. So that's pretty much your blue. And then also the ivory black and yellow ochre make a delicious green. And you can get splendid um, skin tones as well. So it's an awesome versatile palette. And I like the limited yellow, red, black, white. You know, John Singer Sargent in this painting specifically looks like a limited palette, I would put my money on that. I'm not positive. Also, John Singer Sargent is one of the most decorated and celebrated artists you know, in the past couple centuries. There's so many experts on him and there's so many people with so much knowledge um, that study him, not I. You know, I just know base level things and I'm here to learn. But you know, he's very known for um, his subtlety and the complexity that is represented in his subtlety within value color and stroke of paint. So it's very exciting. I'm, I'm amped and I'm just a technician of oil paint and analyzing this painting to copy it and take away some delicious, awesome techniques. Finally, we're set up. We got three camera angles, the wide angle, we got the painting surface, and we also have the palette. So I'm so excited. Which camera am I looking at this one? Let's begin. I'm gonna move this camera angle over here. All right. I got some liquid, which is just a medium to help it kind of be a little looser. And I'm just going to add some turpentine, some of this green, got a big old brush here, you can tell. And I'm just gonna come in and kind of fill this in, even more turpentine. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually erase the portion of where his, his head is to kind of get that kind of just general head shape. So the paper towel, I'm just gonna go like this. And so now I have this super generic shape of a head, his neck coming down here, ear, and it just, it's just a little better visualization that took maybe 35 seconds. You know what I mean? So that's like my first step. Um, I wouldn't even call that an outline. This is just generic visualization. What we want to do. Something I struggled with when I was beginning to oil paint was not using enough paint. So now, um, I still struggle with that, but uh, it's always in the back of my mind to always put enough paint down. Don't be afraid to use much, too much paint, even if it feels like you're out of control. The more paint, the better. Um, don't be afraid to use paint.
have my dark brush for blacks and dark greens. I'm gonna switch to a lighter brush for skin tones so I don't kind of get super mixed up, but we're still staying, staying super loose and just kind of plotting in these major, major colors and value blocks. And I, I really want to focus on color, obviously, because that's a big thing, but right now I just want to kind of find all of the, uh, the fundamentals and then worry about kind of the perfecting it later, if you get what I'm saying. I'm very in the zone right now, though. I'm feeling good. So I'm mixing up titanium white, yellow ochre, and cadmium red light for this juicy skin tone. And uh, that's pretty much good right there. Uh, just a little liquid, and that's fine for starting off. And uh, this is just like the generic light side of the face. Sargent uses a lot of red. I think I gotta get way more red in the nose and cheek area. Um, compared to the other colors, it may not look it, but you know, there's this green mustache right here, and green and red are uh, complementary colors, so it, it really is quite a stark difference. Um, so I'm just gonna throw some more red in here, pretty much all around this face, actually, even in the forehead. And it's so fun to already see it kind of take shape and the resemblance. Like, if you really squint your eyes, this is a good trick. You can kind of see the values and I mean, clearly it's not close, but it, it, it almost is. So <laughs> if that makes any sense at all, it's very exciting. Um, and it's like just, it's just the puzzle of painting. It's so fun. Um, and you know, I still struggle to find these things and the techniques to be able to achieve the likeness or find the correct values or, you know, mixing all these colors. But you know, when you slowly learn and you slowly get a hold of it it's just that much more addicting and that much more fun and you just really want to learn that much more so i think this face is a little too wide i think on this side i'll be able to take some off um, but that's just something i'm thinking in this exact moment and we're gonna keep going We're doing pretty good, I'm happy where we are. I've left the eyes to this exact part, uh, kind of the end of the first stage, you could say the end of the block, and it's the most important part, I struggle the most, I really wanna nail it, so we're gonna go through it together. I'm just gonna try to place, uh, kind of just like the circle, I'm not worried about the iris or the pupil, I just wanna place the circle of the eye, kind of in the right spot. And so I don't know if this is the exact correct placement yet, but we're gonna kind of slowly fiddle our way to see if it works out. And again, I'm just distracting myself from finishing the eyes because as I slowly put them in, I see other things that I can fix, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm putting this big old highlight on his corner of his forehead, which looks really bright, but that's how bright it is. It's like the brightest point besides this pure white. Let's keep going with the eyes. Let's slowly, slowly get there. Feeling good. But then you kind of look back maybe tomorrow or the next day and then you're just like, wait, what? That's not right. But we're gonna roll with this for right now. I'm happy with sort of how it looks and um, not getting over detailed. That's what I want to focus on. So it looks like an eye, um, you know, I need to get this dark green. Um, in the pocket of this eyeball darker because that's important like right there. kind of everywhere. And there's not that much white on the eyeball, I'll have to fix that. So it's so cool this effect, because this shadow is so dark, just pretty much black surrounding 
the, the iris or whatever the colored part of the eye looks very light, you know, almost like it's illuminated compared to this eye that's surrounded by super light. It looks dark, but um, that's just because it's next to the values, you know, a color or a value is only as powerful and influential, influential as the color and value that it's next to. So that's a cool little thing and I'm pretty sure that's correct. And uh, it's, it's just a great little part of this painting, just barely a little light hitting this side of the eyelash or eyelid and you know, reflecting into the eyeball. Pretty cool. So it's been about three hours total and I'm feeling really good actually. Um, we're coming to the final stages and there's a lot in this portrait that is so small and seems insignificant but it's so important. Like this little shadow in the crease of the brow or these two little highlights on you know the edge of the nose where the nostril is and then also on the tip. Um, these little things really explain so much even though they look so simple. So the placement is super important. So those are the things I'm gonna kinda do right now um, and we're gonna do it together, obviously. And so I'm gonna go for this little crease in the eyebrow, this color, it's still saturated, it's kind of like an orangey red. Um, you know, a little orangey than the rest of the face, but still a lot of red. Let me use my mall stick. Okay, I like that a lot. We're gonna go into some of the highlights on the nose now. Those are basically super white, but really pink. Um, so I'm just gonna use just titanium white and red and just like literally a touch, that's even too much. So this is the tip of the nose. And it's so crazy. Um, these little dots just explain so much, and that's why Sargent is so well known. And I have a lot more highlights to do, which we're gonna do right now, but those I just wanted to solidify because I'm gonna move everything kind of around those kind of um, points, those, those, those reference points. That's it, that's it. Woo! I'm feeling real good, you know, we're finished. I can't believe I haven't done a master copy sooner. I've been wanting to for so long. Sargent, Rembrandt, there's so many, obviously, amazing painters um, to mimic, to copy, to learn, parentheses, learn. That's, you know, the agenda behind this whole exercise. And it's not really about the outcome or final product. It's about the process, you know, this technical archaeology, you could say, kind of analyzing and, you know, incorporating these techniques and learning from what the super renowned, amazing artists from the past or even present have done to achieve paintings and then, you know, juicifying it into your own creative um, arsenal. Um, but it's just to learn, you know, analyze color, style, stroke, value structures, these things, you know, obviously there weren't video cameras back when Sargent was around and, you know, they didn't, they couldn't document in a time lapse. So it's kind of, you know, incorporating what you see and I'm um, trying to do it for yourself and it's to learn. And I certainly did learn. I really did. And I'm really happy with how I started. And, you know, I think the face is a little too wide and the tilt is a little wrong. I maybe could have added more red hue, but it's, it's, I'm very happy with it and the final product, sure, but also the resemblance and the process, the path, the journey I took to arrive. Um, and that's what it's all about. And I'm ranting. I love it. I can't get enough. We're going to do more of this. Let me know what you think. If you love painting, like the video, you know, it helps out the channel. We're going to do a bunch of craziness in the studio. Look at that right there. Big old painting, not an oil painting, very different. But we got crazy projects in the works. I love painting, do you?